and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Blackfield 5. Newest album, strangely enough, from Blackfield. And supposedly the fifth, I think. I think I did check it up earlier, and as far as I can tell, there wasn't a Blackfield 3. Which really weirded me out. Um, it, it's one of those, it's the fifth album, but the third and fourth albums aren't called Blackfield 3 and 4. Uh, well, they are, actually. The fourth, the fourth one is actually Blackfield 4. Yeah, Blackfield 4 is there, but Blackfield 3 is actually Welcome to My DNA. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hmm, why went to the naming system here? Because you've got five albums, four of which are following the same system, and one in the middle that isn't. Um, a little bit odd. Yeah. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with the band, you will be familiar with at least one of their members, if you know Porcupine Tree. Steve Wilson. Or any of Steve Wilson's solo stuff, because he's been doing that a lot as well. He's, he's kind of a big thing. Also collaborative with Pendulum on one, one occasion, so we hear him from that. But yeah, um, I, I basically decided upon this album because it's sort of like, fuck it, we're not going to get any porcupine tr- new porcupine tree anytime soon, so might as well do one of his side projects. Yeah. Um, it's a collaborative effort between Steve Wilson and Aviv Geffen, who... I don't know uh, offhand. Um, no, they don't. I know he's Israeli and there's a multi instrumentalist. That's about it. Yeah. Um, it only lists Blackfield as an associated act. Uh, so. Um, I don't have any qualms with this album's music, musical te- technicality, so he's definitely pretty good at what he does. Mm. And first things first. If you are familiar with Porcupine Tree, then right off the bat, you can tell that Steve Wilson has been involved, because... or Stephen yeah, Wilson, like whatever. The orchestral kind of opening thing, and then immediately goes into a song with Steve Wilson singing. It's like, I recognise that vocal. Yeah. Even if I didn't know it was him, I would have recognised it. So. Yeah, I mean, when I first started playing this album, the minute his vocals started, I had a... Hang on. Right. I knew it! Because <laughs> Stephen Wilson has a very distinct voice. Yes, he does. But yeah, I, I just had that immediate... Wait, I know that voice. I recognise that voice. And you'll possibly recognise stylistic similarities with some of the other bands he's worked with, like... Opeth, Kim Crimson, Pendulum, Jethro Tull, XTC, Yes, Marillion, Tears for Fears, Roxy Music, and Pierce, one of your favourite bands. Oh god, which one? Anathema. Oh yeah. I thought you were be sarcastic then, but no, you were correct. But I think I do remember hearing about that collaboration. Mm. I've also referred to Stephen Wilson mentioned in regards to Anathema. I think some of the latest stuff. Especially, I think uh, weather systems might have influence from him, or if there's some um, interaction with him. I wouldn't be surprised if weather systems has some of his work on it, because I I remember having a bit of a some of this feels a bit like porcupine tree sort of feel, or at least Stephen Wilson's stuff. Um, uh, I'll just we're here because we're here. Oh, that was him. that makes sense. A couple of songs from Distant Satellite as well. We hear because we hear it just sounds like never Porky Point Tree album anyway, so Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, th- I really enjoyed this album. Uh now I was reading through the description for it and it's apparently a loose concept of um yeah, a loose concept themed around the ocean and the cycle of life flying across 13 songs and approximately 45 minutes of music. That sounds about right, actually. I can can see that right here. Yeah. Now, I will say, at points, some of the song orders feel a bit peculiar. Um, this seems to flow relatively well for me. Mm. Well, that's the thing. It's not so much that musically they don't flow well, it's just the themes sometimes feel a bit... One after the other, the themes seem a bit puzzling occasionally. I guess I can get that. I mean, I, mean, I think it's very much classed as a loose concept album because 
whilst the contents do kind of go through it, it doesn't seem to, you know, heavily focus on the moment, so. Yeah. Whilst the contents do kind of go through it, it doesn't seem to, you know, heavily focus on the moment, so. I think if you can tell us occasionally, it's like, oh yeah, this this links to that, this links to that, yeah. You listen to songs individually without it feeling out of place or feeling as if you're missing anything, I'd say. Yeah. Which I'm quite a time you really can't do that because it has to be like a full piece, like um, Porcupine Trees, Voice 34, for example. Yeah. You pretty much have to listen to that as a whole. Yeah. I mean, y- you can kind of do a sort of, like, a drop in the ocean. How is your ride? Life is an ocean. Uh... The Jackal and Saltwater, I'd say, are the ones that link together as the themes of the ocean. Whereas um, Family Man uh, will never be apart. Sorry's Lately, October, Undercover Heart, Lonely Soul, and From 44 to 48, those link together more as the cycle of life thing. Hmm. Um... Well, it's kind of case of trying to do two different concepts, but both of them are also kind of intrinsically linked. Yeah. As well. So these two concepts are pretty cool, and both of them also kind of interact with each other in a similar kind of way. One can be used as a metaphor for the other. Yeah. Um, it kind of runs a bit of a gamut with styles and genres, because, like, um, The Jackal. Now, that's very much a sort of good old rock song with a sort of bluesy edge to it. It's got a kind of proggy feel to it, especially in the second half. Mm. Uh, whereas Lonely Soul, um, I'm not even sure what you'd classify that as. Um, I don't know, but whatever it is, I really like it. Yeah, it's a strangely it. It's very curiously simplistic, but it's one of those. A song doesn't need to be complex to be powerful and effective. Hmm, I'd agree. And Lonely Soul is a song that exemplifies that concept because it's very simplistic structurally. It's got two refrains that comprise the lyrical content and it's overlaid over samples and a melody, um, which kind of act as refrains upon themselves. Um, What makes it work is it builds. Mm, It does. Um... And we really like a good build. Yeah, we've said before how we are suckers for songs that build up. And whilst it fades at the end, it's not that sort of fade that makes you go, oh, I was listening to that. It's more of a... It's more like it's evoking some of the concept of the ocean. So it's... It kind of works with both the cycle of life and the ocean concepts. Once again, this brings me back to Porcupine Tree's Anathetize, mm. which has like the final third chunk of that, because it's like 17 minutes long. There's a lot of kind of ocean wave sounds going on, and it's super good. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to note that after the release of Blackfield 4 and a brief tour in its support, co founder of the group Steve Wilson who had already played his smallest role in the project yet, announced that he intended to leave the band altogether in 2014 to focus on his solo career. While this originally left the future of the band in question, throughout the 2015 and 2016, the band's social media accounts would release pictures of Wilson, co-founder Aviv Geffen, and music producer Alan Parsons, who... I'll put it as simply as this. If you've listened to music in the last 60 years... You've probably heard something he's done. Because he's done a crap ton of stuff. Well... So have you ever heard of Dark Side of the Moon or Abbey Road? Because those are both it. Yeah, Abbey Road, Let It Be. Um, art rock band Ambrosia's debut album. Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, he's worked with Stephen Wilson before as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's got plenty of his own stuff. Uh, I mean, well, Alan Boston's product for one. Yeah, which is quite a well-known name. I know that I have some of the stuff lying around here somewhere amongst this gigantic pile of music. Hmm. Uh, Atom Heart Mother, uh, Hollies, uh, Another Night, Year of the Cat, Jesus, uh, Time Passages, uh. 
the raven that refused to sing and other stories. Uh, he was the producer of the OST for Lady Hawk. Uh, producer of symphonic music by Yes. Or symphonic music of Yes, but whatever. Um, but yeah, it's one of those... He's definitely made a name for himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. In August 2016, it was confirmed that there would be a fifth album... Wilson was still with the project, and he even contributed evenly to the sessions as he had with the band's first two albums before he had begun to focus more on his solo career while Geffen took over more responsibilities for their second two albums. The album had been produ had been recorded even on and off over the course of an anti Ugh. stumbling over words here. The album had been recorded on and off over the course of an 18-month period, including sessions in both England and Israel. Wilson and Geffen shared vocals, guitars and keyboard duties, while longtime drummer Thomas Z, or Zed, I don't know, uh, I, I honestly don't know how whether it be Z or Zed in this context. Um, Probably Zed, I guess. Huh? Um, was name could, could be either. Yeah. I thought he's actually the brother of someone who's played with Genesis. Yeah. yeah. Um, additionally, the London Sessions Orchestra was recruited for the string arrangements for the album. It was an, also announced that Parsons had produced three of the key tracks for the album. Which tracks? It doesn't say. We would look at the um, Alba album learning notes. But it's not technically out yet. To the <laughs> yeah. Naughty. Uh, let's um, see if I can find it. It just says three of the album's key tracks. You'd have to wait for more information to come out when it gets released. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, I did actually take notes for this. Because uh, this will sound really weird, but enjoyed the album. Enjoyed all of it, even the parts that I wasn't all that hot on. It it was a case of okay, this is an all right song. It's not amazing, but it's it's serviceable. But it took me about four or five listens to actually start remembering the songs. <laughs> Sometimes it take a while to kind of get to you. Yeah. I I have never had that happen with an album before. Uh, actually, no, correction. The only other time I've had that happen with an album has been Lacuna Coil's most recent album. And again, really enjoyed that. Could not remember it afterwards! <laughs> I feel in that case you were listening to a crap ton of music for a short period of time, all of which we're going to be reviewing. Fair point. Um, our favourite song on the album... Very difficult to pick. I said for me, it's probably between Undercover Heart or The New Soul. Or maybe The Jackal. I think those three are too. Yeah. For me, it's even harder because really love Sorries. Really love Undercover Heart, which for me kind of feels like a mix of Lou Reed and Nick Cave. I can definitely hear that, yeah. There's the kind of opening first sounds very much like that. Yeah. The only thing is a little Nick Cavey there, probably. Mm. And Lonely Soul. Um, yeah. Sorry's The Jackal, Undercover Heart, and Lonely Soul. Absolutely love all four of those songs. I mean, Sorry's really resonates for me. Um, given what's been happening recently, I'm sure you can understand why it resonates for me. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, seven years of sorries being part of the chorus and it's sort of like of course I didn't counter this sort of song with what's going on in my personal life I will not go into that because you already know enough of my personal life to go to counsellors on your own <laughs> I mean considering I had to take down one of the reviews because of bullshit um you can still get it if you contribute to the Patreon. But yeah, I mean, the Jackal really gets me because of that 
that opening riff that's what i'm talking about with the bluesy edge it just has that really mournful sound to it yeah um especially the guitar right near the end of that meeting a lot of that david gilmore style yeah you know very kind of what's the word oh i don't know what i'm trying to think of now yeah i don't know ambient i don't know something like that i don't know not the word i'm looking for something kind of like kind of as a kind of wishy-washy kind of feel ethereal i think it's probably a good way to go about it mm-hmm. wouldn't say ethereal uh it's not the word I'm looking for, but it'll have to do for now. It's a comp word right now, so really. Uh, yeah, th- this kind of runs through the gamut of various styles of rock, and a- as I say, I do not know what you'd classify Lonely Soul as. Um, possibly Electronica? I don't know. Um, there's a Electronica in- influence there, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, maybe R and B, possibly a little bit of trip hop in there as well. Actually, you could think a little bit uh, musically, you know, like um, sorry, Mass, uh, Mass Effect, Massive Attack stuff. You... Yeah, which is nowhere a bad thing because I'm a pretty big fan of Mass Effect. Yeah, Massive Attack a very good life also. Cause it... Of course, is funnily enough. Now I'm not sure if you, whether you could hear it, but uh, October. Um, that kind of had a feel of sort of like a mix of things, like a bit of anathema, a bit of Lou Reed, sort of certain musical theatre stylings. The kind of um, keyboard is getting on in the background, especially in the opening, sounds very anathema to me. I always think of Eternity or Anathema a bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely a powerful, it definitely works to really bring to the forefront the idea of the ebbs and flows of emotions it kind of reflecting them in the idea of what octo you know autumnal months can feel like you know the wilting and of plants all that sort of thing during the colder months that sort of thing um i i'm just going all over the place with this album because actually you know what october does remind me a bit mm-hmm. we're singing musicals yeah it's a kind of song you can kind of come at the climax of some kind of theatre production. Yeah. Well, as I said, musical theatre stylings. Yeah. Um, it's sort of how... I think what emphasises that is there's a lot of crescendos that come throughout various songs that... I think you could argue that that's a way of better detailing the, uh, the loose concept of an ocean. You know, the ebbs and flows, the high and low waves. The ebbs and flows of life itself as well. Yeah. Um, now, we'll never be apart. I'm not sure about you, but I kind of got vibes of a certain band we've covered before. Which one exactly? <laughs> a certain band who we need to finish a retrospective on. Ah, yes. We really need to get that sorted. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it definitely I definitely got sort of the feel of some of Hurt's stuff. I'm not sure if you heard that. I can hear it. It's not huge, but it's kind of there in the background. I think it's a little bit of it, yeah. Um, again, it's a fairly simple track, but really enjoyable. Um, the refrain of We'll Never Be Apart, for me, can be understood as having more of a sentiment of togetherness instead of separation, if that makes sense. Mm. It's sort of like, we'll never be a part of each other's lives, that sort of thing. Again, it's a song that resonates quite heavily with me. Mm. Um, Overall, I'd say this album is a very resonant one that most people will be able to find relatable subjects, but it's not... Yeah. yeah, it's not clubbing you over the head with them like, say, Nickelback would. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even kidding. From Chad Kroger himself, he said that How You Remind Me was was quite literally music by committee. He analysed all the popular songs, all the really famous um, popular rock songs, dissected them, analysed their lyrical content... And that's how you ended up with this 
quite literal cookie cutter love song. Um, <laughs> but enough bitching. Uh, Bitch filled. Um, I am rather curious about the name Blackfield because it's sort of like why Blackfield. Um, no obvious reason why, but I can't say I've found any reasoning for it. Mm. I mean, Stephen Wilson's always had some very interesting ideas for his release names, or song titles, or stuff. What does Porcupine Tree even mean? Um, ah, so that's how it started out. Um, Geffen, a fan of Porcupine Tree and Wilson, invited the band to play shows in Israel in 2000. He struck up a friendship with Wilson, leading the to the two musicians recording together. Geffen performed backing vocals on two tracks on Porcupine Tree's In Absentia album. Oh, fair enough. In Absentia is a good album as well. Um, the Sound of Muzak and Prodigal. Geffen, interested in growing a fan base outside of Israel, approached Wilson about starting their own project, which would become Blackfield. Originally planned as an EP for a 2001 release, it eventually evolved into a 2004 self-titled full-length recording. Wilson provided lead vocals on all but two songs and played guitar or piano on every song except Scars, which had instrumentation provided on Geffen's band The Mistakes. Outside of Israel, the band has received constant comparison to Porcupine Tree. No shit! No surprise there, because I think it's the same, Rob and the same members. He's kind of the mute brain behind Porcupine Tree. In response, Wilson has explained, Porcupine Tree would never be so focused on the art of a three-minute pop song, which I believe Blackfield is all about, the art of a great tradition pop song of verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Yeah, if you've listened to any Porcupine Tree, there is no verse, chorus, verse, chorus. It's just... Verse, 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 verse. It's just... It keeps getting progressiver. Yeah. <laughs> Porcupine Tree has never been about that, although we have fraternised a little bit with the art of pop music. Porcupine Tree has always been more about horizontally complex long pieces and the album is an overall piece rather than lots of little pieces. Aviv is not a big fan of heavy music, and he is not a big fan of long pieces, so immediately the meeting point had to be somewhere where we were both focused on short, melancholic songs. Um, musical style and influences. Geffen has described the band's sounds as, I don't think it's prog, really. It's very melodic, but it's not prog. I don't allow Stephen to play more than two minute solos. He respects that. Blackfield is everything. It's metal, it's prog, it's pop. Blackfield sounds so special because it's a really odd collaboration. I'm not coming from the prog scene, I'm coming from the indie rock pop scene. Geffen states that while he enjoys mixing different musical sounds, he refuses to incorporate rap music into the band sound, stating, I hate hip hop, we won't do a shitty pop song. Influences for the band include Jim Morrison, Radiohead, King Crimson, Genesis, and Pink Floyd. That sounds very logical. Yeah. Of course, three out of five of those bands I do really like. At least, pre-Phil Collins in Genesis' case. <laughs> well, well, to be most accurate, pre-anything after Trick of a Tale. Genesis does seem to be very split in regards to a fan base, so... Yeah. Not tomorrow. I do find that most people who prefer Phil Collins stuff aren't too hot on prog rock. Yeah, the influences are very much strong. Mm. Uh, crossovers. There's been some overlap between Blackfield and Geffen and Wilson's other projects. The songs Scars, Cloudy Now, Glow, A Thousand People, Epidemic, End of the World, and Zygota had originally been written by Geffen in Hebrew before being translated into English and adapted by Blackfield, even if they hadn't all been released on his recordings yet. On the other hand, 
The song Christenings was originally conceived during Wilson's writing sessions for Porcupine Tree's 2005 release Deadwing, but was released on Blackfield 2 instead. Additionally, the track Feel So Low off of Porcupine Tree's 2000 release Lightbulb Sun was re-recorded by Blackfield and added to the record LP only version of Blackfield's self-titled album. Which one? <laughs> Excuse me, the first one. Yeah. In this version, Geffen sings the first verse in Hebrew. Why do I get the feeling that sooner or later we'll have to do a retrospective of Blackfield just because they started so far back it's sort of like, oh, we've missed all this. I mean, I literally only found out about Blackfield like two weeks ago. Less than that. I had heard the name, but I didn't really know much else. I think I heard the name because I know a pop country. So. Um, of course, as this album is, is coming out in two days, officially. Yeah. Or today, if we're going by when this will be uploaded, because it'll probably be uploaded on Friday. But yeah, there's not much information. Aside from that the album was originally scheduled for release... Last year, yeah. Yeah, late last year. So it's only... Yeah. It was scheduled for release on the 18th of November. It's coming out on 10th of February. So it's not that bad in terms of delays. I mean, we know of far worse delays. Tool! <laughs> No, I'm not letting that go! Jeez. Will it happen this year? We don't know. We will never know until it happens. Uh, no reason was cited beyond circumstances beyond the band's control. So that could have been anything from illness to... Well, let's face it. Their equipment could have been stolen out of their van. Yep, Does that totally happened. As we know from recent events of Perturbator. Yeah. My heart goes out to Perturbator of all the things to happen. Yep. <laughs> um, they did release Family Man, How Was Your Ride and Sorries as singles on the 8th of December. So it looks like it was more, it was probably production, actual album production as opposed to song production. So it's already written, but in any case it just, it wasn't properly finished up and ready for release. Yeah, I mean, it says here, though the album itself was complete at the time of the delay announcement. So maybe promotion delays? It's all speculation here. I mean, it, circumstances beyond the band's control. That that implies that they were sort of like, oh, um, okay, how do we get around this? Shit. What do we do? <laughs> well, they eventually managed to get it out, so... Mm. Whatever it was, they got over it. Yeah. And dealt with it. So, and now it's out. Well, we'll be out in a couple of days, but it's out, at least in digital form. So, either that or we just listen to something that doesn't exist. Um, would you say you'd rearrange any of the songs for this album? Um, I'm not entirely sure that I agree with 44 to 48 being the last track. Yeah, I, I was having a bit of a... I mean, it's okay as the last track? But I would actually personally put Lonely Soul as the last track. I would mm, probably move Saltwater to the end, actually. Because it opened with like, the orchestral instrumental part. I think closing with that as the other instrumental song would have actually worked quite nicely. I mean, the only issue there is that I personally feel that if you were to move Saltwater, you'd also need to move the Jackal. Maybe. Actually, yeah, maybe move both into the end. That would that'd probably work for me. Because they flow into each other very seamlessly. Hmm. Because... I, when I was listening to it, I was sort of like, wait, the track's changed? And not in a, I'm so bored, when is this going to end? No, I literally did, it didn't register that it was a different song. I just thought it was a long song. Yeah, well, with no important point, it wouldn't surprise me. Either. Yeah, that's why I was, I was sort of like, wait, what? It's changed? Okay. There's at the end, because I think that would be a good way to end it. Yeah. The only reason it registered that it was a change of song was the lack of lyrics. Hmm. This instrumental outro mm. is also very possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually thinking about it, 
having the Jackal and Saltwater as the last two tracks would probably work well. 44 to 48 is a it's okay as a calming end to the album, but it feels a bit weak compared to the rest. It feels more like a middling track. Yeah, it's a good song, but it just doesn't feel like a closing song. Yeah. But yeah, I reckon it's a pretty solid album. I will probably go back and check out the earlier Black Films. Yeah. Because, well, why not? I mean, I like Walker Bantry, I like Stephen Wilson, and I really enjoyed this album, so I don't think there's any reason not to go back. Yeah. I've downloaded a couple of their albums, the first two, so I'll be giving those a listen through. Um, what would you rate it? Um, probably 3.5, I'd say. Yeah, I'd, I'd go for 3. I mean, nothing, a couple of the tracks you know, stand out as being better than that. But most of it seems to think, yeah, it's above average, but nothing super amazing. And maybe it's a case of, you know, the more I listen to it, the more I like it. Because this is the kind of album which would approve with further listening. Yeah. Or you listen through it properly twice and been listening to it a third time whilst I'm doing this, so... Mm. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd go 3.5, maybe at a stretch of 4. You may reach to a 4 by the time we've listened to it a bunch of times and got used to it and got it into our heads and that. Yeah. Um... It's one of those cases of... It's definitely one of those it needs to be listened to multiple times. Hmm, okay, so. Definitely an album that I will pick up when it actually comes out. Um, I don't expect it to appear in HMV or anything like that, but... Knowing my HMV, I reckon it might be mine, actually. We've yeah, pretty, we've got pretty good luck with getting things in at least, maybe not on time, but eventually we do tend to get a lot of stuff in. Yeah, well, the, that, so. yeah, well, the difference is you've got a bit of a your HMV seems a bit more niche than mine. Hmm. Um, but uh, Banquet Records, which is a local indie record store, which I've actually talked to, and I'll be able to put flyers for promoting the show and all that sort of thing in there. So. But yeah, I picked up Run the Jewels 3 in there, so... Well, as I think I've probably said before, my local HMV currently has both Run the Jewels 3 and Charlotte's Campino's Awaken My Love on the recommended section right now. Which I... Now, Childish Gambino, I might have expected a bit more because Childish Gambino is a bit more well-known, what with being part of community and all that sort of thing. True. But Run the Jewels being in there, that's a bit more of a surprise. Although, I don't know what to expect from record stores these days. I'm not going to argue about being able to access music I actually want to listen to. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do often pick up CDs from my local team because they actually have things I want in. So. Um, yeah, I can't really find anything more info-wise, unfortunately. But hey, uh, it's a pretty good album if you like Prog Rock or you like Pop Country, then I recommend it. Mm. And for any people who are particularly interested about covers, which, curiously, the cover is someone holding some sort of bottle with Blackfield written across it, and a sort of an ocean background message in a bottle, I guess? I don't know. Um, Were we the sea? I don't fucking know. But yeah, for anyone interested in cover artists and that sort of thing, it's photographed by Asse Hoyle, and the design is by Carl Glover. If those names mean anything to anyone. Um, Carl Glover does sound kind of... Yeah, actually, it, it does sound familiar. Um, yeah, it's really frustrating. It doesn't say which three tracks Alan Parsons worked on. Eh. It doesn't even say on Alan Parsons, I don't think. That's... Oh, uh, that's why Carl Glover's worked with David Bowie, The Smiths, most of the people, Rolling Stones. Yeah, he's pretty happy to do So, another Alan Parsons is sort of like, if you've looked at covers in the last 40 or 50 years... Yep, good stuff. Mm. Um, not really anything left to say. Uh, so I guess that will be goodbye. Yeah. Uh, no idea what the next album will be. We pretty much just decide it on the fly. I mean, Pierce, if you've got any albums that you want to recommend that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. 
Mm, well, there is Thundercat, but that's not so much any fourth, I think, so maybe we go to home something before that. Uh, let's see, well, let's see. Yeah, um, I mean, we could cover the new Marilyn Manson album. I didn't even know it was coming out, jeez. Uh, or the new Blue Tangle album. Okay, also, since it's a little side note, the only crazy bikes I have, they were pretty fucking great. Mm -hmm. They were on form, they had Gizu on bass, they had Iomi on guitar, they had Ozzy on vocals. Ozzy was kind of out of his face with it, not sure because of any drugs or alcohol, but just because that's the way he is. And <laughs> a, bit of, a really damn good set. I think Ozzy is at the stage where he's just permanently high. But, uh, if this actually is the final, final tour, then I'm happy to see him for the win. Oh, you know what we could cover? Uh -huh. For a special Valentine's Day episode. Oh, God. Fifty Shades Darker original motion picture soundtrack. Who was the composer for it? That's the question. Right, let's have a look. Um. Oh, oh! This would be horrible. Oh. Well, track one by Zayn and Taylor Swift. Oh, jeez. Uh, don't know them, don't know them, don't know them, don't know them. John Legend. Don't know them. Nick Jonas and Nicki Minaj. Uh, see ya, so that that would be like the one potentially good song on the album. I really need to listen to see ya. Oh, there's a couple of Danny Elfman tracks. Oh, that could be good. Uh, <laughs> oh. Well, if this happens, we'll see you then. If not, I guess I'll see you somewhere else. Yeah. Um, just closing thoughts on the album. If you like sort of, if you want to dip your toes into prog rock but aren't too keen on the standard for prog rock this is a good album to go with because they're standard pop song length but they've got prog feel so you're able to get in and get out quickly yeah that's true they're bite sized prog <laughs> it's like the BBC GCSC help well I mean if you do like this and you haven't checked out Pocket Ventura, I also recommend that. Mm. What do we most likely to recommend? I know Deadwing is probably the best place to enter. Also, because it's a really good album. So, go with that. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I've mainly just dipped into. I, I don't listen to full Porcupine Tree albums, I just go for random songs and let them play. I recommend listening to Deadwing as a whole, though, because that album is really solid. So. Fair dues. Uh, yeah, uh, whatever will be the next episode, we don't know. We'll see you in the future. The future is filled with mystery. I don't know why I twiddled my fingers because so can actually see my hands. But... Well, when we do the Devin Townsend uh, live review, you can twiddle your thumbs then. This is true. It's not long now, please. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Whatever it'll be, we'll catch you on the next Once More With Feeling. It's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.